Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we review one of High West's newest release. That is the High West Bourbon Cask Strength. Run the video. All right then folks, and welcome back to another new and exciting episode of the Whiskey Cove. And like the aforementioned intro, we will be reviewing High West's newest relief, the Cask Strength Bourbon. But before we do, can I have a bit of a giveaway going? If you haven't already, or if you don't already know, then that's all you need to do is be a subscriber and go over to the Whiskey Coast shop and then sign up for a entry to that said giveaway. The bottles that we have so far is the Willet Four Year Rye, we have the Old Forester Barrel Strength Single Barrel, and then we also have the OWA Antique 107. And we will be re uh, releasing a, another ball very soon, and then two more balls after that. So we will have a total of six to give away. Like I said, you have to be a subscriber and just make sure you put your ticket in over at the website. The link is down. Down below in the description there let's get these out of here and then let's talk high west so high west have been coming up with a couple of new releases lately in the last 12 months or so they did the, uh, the sister releases of the high west midwinter nights dram and then the high west midwinter nights dram encore so the high west regular what a midwinter nights dram was the 10 release uh, truth be told you can go back and watch the review i wasn't the biggest fan of either of those a little bit let down if I'm completely honest. Uh, I'm a big High West fan as you can see. And then also they released a Prisoner Share and then they also released a High West Boo Rye. And we did a review on that too and that is phenomenal juice. So they got my attention back again. However, they have brought this back. Uh, I say brought this back. They've come out with the first, I think this is the first ever High West cast strength that they did. I can't remember another one. Like the Yippie Kaye, the 14 year, the 15 year, uh, the Grand Grant uh, the, the Grand, uh, Grant Reserve. Uh, I don't think any of those were cast strengths, to be fair. Yes, you could say some of the double rise are cast strengths, but they, they kind of just sit at like high 40s or low 50s. So maybe not a true cast strength in the way. And they're all finished bourbons as well. This is just a straight up cast strength bourbon. So let's take a little look at the bottle here. It comes in a very typical high west bottle. I think they use these bottles for everything, apart from maybe some of the older stuff there. Beautiful, nice wood top cork with real cork inside kudos for that there as well and just looking at the label it's this pretty sweet label there as well really nice black squared there and some nice bronze like a like of a copper still font there at the front the cast strength on the high west badge there as well so this is coming in at 58.7 percent abv so quite close to 60 and a fair cast strength if i don't say so myself this is batch number 23 B2 and thank you so much for Troy who is a fan of this show and who's actually the individual who got us the bull rye as well so I much appreciate you helping us out here on the channel Troy. MSRP on this is around about $80 is what you're looking to pay for it. I have seen this drop in other states outside of Utah, Arizona, I think Wyoming too so maybe expect to see it on the east coast if it's not already there as well. Uh, there's nothing more really to be said about the bottle. It does say hand selected for Utah on this bottle but you can also seem to be hand selected for Maryland and hand selected for Arizona there as well. So with that being said let's get this whiskey into the glass and let's pick it apart as best we can. How's the coke pop? Pretty good. A nice size pour there as well. And like I said, I really like High West's bottles. The glass is proper thick on them and they will take a bit of a drop to kind of break them as well there. So then just visually looking at the whiskey in the glass and it's really interesting that they kind of put the, the copper uh, font here and kind of like the stamp because it kind of has a really, a really high copper hue to it. That would be the first descriptive uh, the first descriptor I can give of the color. Definitely very copper forward, maybe a touch of honey there as well. Just rolling it around in the glass. It does like to stick to the sides of the glass, which is always a good sign as well. And then is my understanding, this is mostly High West's own stuff, but with some other sauce whiskey blended in there as well. But with that being said, let's go in for a nose here. So you're definitely getting some sweetness there right at the front. I'm thinking maybe like a, like a butterscotchy maple syrup, uh, maple syrup note there. And I'm definitely picking up like some uh, 
maybe stone fruit there as well, or like a pear note. That's a really inviting nose, to be fair. I wasn't expecting that from a High West product. I wasn't expect expecting pears and maybe plums there as well. There's definitely a figgy note there as well. It definitely has some of that like baked pastry note there as well. So maybe think like those fig, uh, like uh, cookies that you can get with like the fig in the middle and like that baked, uh, uh, the baked kind of biscuit around the outside. I'm not really picking up anything off-putting on the nose there. I I'm not trying to go out to try to find that, but some of the newer High West products with their own distillate, uh, there's sometimes a little bit of corny, grainy, kind of uh, uh, like a baked popcorn type of yeasty note there that I don't really like. I'm not getting it from this. And that's a really big compliment for High West's new distillate because since then I've always been able, since they've started introducing their distillate, I've always kind of picked that up in some of their newer, uh, newer releases. Definitely a, a nice wood backbone there as well, but not overwhelming at all. It just kind of completes it. It doesn't dry off the whiskey as well. The star is kind of like that figgy fruit, pear, plum, and then the, those kind of sweeter butterscotch and kind of maple syrup notes there as well. I'm very excited and looking forward to this. High West's cast strength bourbon. Cheers. So the first thing I really pick up on this is the mouthfeel. It is very viscous. I wouldn't say as viscous as like a toasted whiskey, but it's definitely very pleasant to just have sit on your palate there. Excellent job. Feel it coat in the front here quite a lot, and then my tongue there as well. And as that oiliness kind of subsides just a little bit there, I'm getting a touch of like a, like a burn up here, maybe like a peppercorn or like a mustard type burn, and then also on my tongue and a little bit on the cheek there as well. Flavors, yes, along with the oily kind of mouthfeel, you do get a really nice rich sweetness that kind of lends from that butterscotch note that you get there as well. And espresso bean type note, like those espresso beans wrapped in like a darker chocolate there as well. It's quite a complex whiskey as well, and that's a, another quite big compliment that I can give this as well. Let's drive back in for another taste and see if we can pick it apart any further. I'm also getting a really nice caramel corn, like a fresh caramel popcorn, just as you're going to the movie theater. And, you know, you put it in your mouth, it's a little bit crunchy there as well, but just as you chew it a little bit more, you get a little bit more of that sweetness and that good, beautiful caramel sweetness that comes out there as well. There's definitely some spice in this as well. I talked a little bit about that at the front of my mouth, but it's definitely there throughout. You get this really nice sweetness there, that caramel popcorn, maple syrup, butterscotchy note, and that kind of transitions nice and gently. And then that spice kind of takes over there as well. And that's more of like a peppercorn, maybe rye spice there as well. Think of like rye seed off the top of a piece of rye bread there as well. And then when that's all said and done, you get a really nice soft oaky feel that kind of just subtly dries up your palate just to kind of complete the whole experience there. All in all, what I will say about this cast strength of bourbon, it's very well balanced. If you're someone who likes super spicy whiskey or super sweet whiskey or super dry whiskey, then this probably is not for you. This lends each one of those categories equal parts and brings it all together and makes a very enjoyable experience for the drinker or consumer or aficionado. With that being said, I wanna try this one more time. I wanna see if I can pick up any nuances there so I can bring that to you folks at home here. There is also what I'm picking up there ever so slightly. You really need to rummage around for this. Maybe like fresh bread, not quite fresh dough, but more of just like when it's just come out of the oven, uh, you still get a little bit of doughiness, but like some nice toasted notes there as well. I don't get too much of that fruit that came over from the, from the nose, but it's definitely more darker fruits like dates, 
figs, sultanas, raisins, that sort of thing if you're gonna try and pick them out there as well. But again, I'm getting that coffee express or bean note there right at the end as the wood kind of dries that out and so would like an express or bean if you're chewing it there. So if you are new to the channel, for reviews, what we like to do, value for money, A through F, A being the best value for money and then F being the worst. And then also a score out of zero to 100. Why do we do such a big scale? Well, maybe just the zero to 10 just doesn't quite encapsulate encapsulate the small nuances between like an eight and an 8.5 because they're big scores when it comes down to really critiquing whiskey. So for value for money, I said this was about $80 MSRP. You know, I'm really comfortable with that price. It's a high West product and it's cast strength. And when I say it's a high West product, high West kind of uh, gives off maybe more of a premium vibe if you want to. And maybe that's from someone who's gone and done the whiskey tours over in uh, Salt Lake City, not Salt Lake City, sorry, Park City there. And it's it's a little bit bushy, if I don't say so myself. You go in there, you have a meal and some drinks, you're probably coming out with quite an expensive tab there as well. So it's very gourmet, if you like, in food terms. For so $80, I'm gonna give this, I'm gonna give this a B, which is a pretty good score for value for money for this. I think that it has a lot going on for that price there, and it's a pretty complex whiskey. So for score out of 100, and this is the big one, can High West continue their trend since the Boo Rye and continue high scores here with the Whiskey Cove? I don't remember what I give the Boo Rye, but that doesn't matter, I'm focusing on this whiskey. So for this out of 100, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it an 80, I'm gonna give this an 83, which is a pretty high score here for the Whiskey Cove because we take our reviews really seriously and we try to be as honest as we can. That's all you need to do is go back and look at older reviews just to see kind of how honest we are about our reviews. So 83 out of 100 is a fantastic score for this. I can't remember some of the scores that I've given whiskeys in the past, but like I think I give like an El Matili like 20 or 30 something, which is basically nothing there as well. George T. Stagg, we give like a 98. Russell's Reserve single uh, Rick House, the Camp Nelson, we give like a 96, 97. I'm just looking around just to try to remember scores off the top of my head. I'm not gonna be able to do that because I'm kind of in the zone with this, but 83 out of 100 is a top score. Hopefully you folks at home have enjoyed this review. If you do, make sure you like the video as well so we can continue to do these reviews here on the channel. The reviews, for whatever reason, people are just maybe not necessarily as into as maybe some of the other stuff that we do here on the channel, whether that be like TLS, store halls, blind battles, reviews are just maybe not as looked at uh, as favorably in the social media sense, I guess. But it's definitely something I want to continue to do on the channel because it really get, gets to what a whiskey is all about and maybe let, it gives me an opportunity to kind of really drill down into the whiskey and give you hopefully some uh, recommendations at home there as well. With that being said, very impressed by this edition from High West. I'm super happy that I was able to go get it. Thank you again, Troy, for making that happen. And that's all I need to say is uh, High West is back, baby. Yes, they are back and I'm very excited to see what is next. Bring on Midwinter Night's Dram. As we say on this channel, you drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time. My name's Patrick. Cheers.